welcome to Kennewick First Presbyterian Church. My name is Steve Wood, and I am an elder serving on sessions. Whether you are joining us online or here in the sanctuary, we hope you will experience God's presence and grace. Announcements are printed in your bulletin, and if you actually open up into the middle, there's a wonderful, colorful description of all the Holy Week, act, Holy Week activities. Also a reminder that you have one more week to sign up for the uh, women's retreat. We also remind you that if you are new, visiting the church, we would love to have you fill out one of these cards that are on the rack in front of you. Helps us keep track and get to know you a little better. And for you folks who are not new, if you would pass the red friendship pad down the aisle and sign that in, it does allow us to keep track of who we have on a regular basis in here. A couple of other announcements. Uh, last, uh, yesterday, Saturday morning, uh, we had scheduled this uh, cleanup service, spring cleaning, to go on inside and outside of the church. And Bill Thackerberry and Bob Spaulding, your facilities committee, had put that together. I will tell you, they, if you look around, they have done a wonderful job. They had a good number of members from our congregation, and they had a good number of people from our Ukrainian Church of Hope that meets here in the afternoon. They sent people down, too. And Pastor Vasily, we appreciate, who is sitting back here in the back, we appreciate your communicating, and everybody glowed and, and said what a great group of young men they were. One other small um, announcement. Back in the narthex, Helen Pratt is selling Girl Scout cookies. So check with her. So, did I not bring my... One too many pieces of paper. Would you join me... Oh, wait, we get the choir now that I read. turned to Hannah and I said, that choir sounds so good. We are so lucky. Would you join me reading responsibly here in the call to worship in your bulletin? Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Shout Hosanna. For the Lord is coming, line the festival road with waving branches. We have palm branches praying and praising as we walk God's way. This morning we have the blessing of receiving new members and introducing them to all of you. So would those of you who are joining the church please come forward at this time. On behalf of the session of First Presbyterian, I am happy to present Aaron and Tom Barr. They're the first ones coming down the aisle. We have Pamela Gassaway, and then we have uh, Heather and Dustin and their whole family, Emily and Ezra and Eli. We're so glad you guys are here. Welcome. Oh, and I didn't say your last name. Ray. Ray. This is the Ray family. You come to us as members of one holy Catholic church into which you were baptized and by which you have been nurtured. We are one with each other, sisters and brothers in the family of God, and we rejoice in the gifts that you bring to us. 
As you join with us in worship and service of this congregation, it is fitting that together we reaffirm the covenant into which we were baptized, claiming again the promises of God, which are ours in baptism. Our baptism is a sign and seal of our cleansing from sin and our being grafted into Christ. Let us celebrate that freedom and redemption through the renewal and the promises made at our baptism. Now, as you publicly declare your faith, I ask you to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith into which you were baptized. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, say, I do. I do. Who is your Lord and Savior? <laughs> I know, Emily, it's all right, baby. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's your answer. I know. We got a little distracted. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, say, I will with God's help. Now that you have publicly professed your faith, will you be a faithful member of this congregation? Share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. If so, say, I will with God's help. I will, with God's help. will you extend your hand as we pray over these, our sisters and brothers in Christ? O Lord, uphold us by your Holy Spirit. Daily increase your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forevermore. Continue the good work you have begun in all of us. Send us forth in the power of your spirit to love and serve you with joy and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Lead us to know and obey your word that we may serve you in this life and dwell with you forever in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Friends, welcome to this church in its congregation and ministry. Let's stand and we're going to sing our first hymn this morning. Please be seated. As we celebrate on this Palm Sunday, will you read with me responsibly our prayer of confession? Lord, you ride on with humble glory. We join our voices and hearts with the crowd hoping that you will do what we expect of you. Lord, 
Lead us, Lord, to know your way and to walk with you on any road you travel. Amen. Will you take a moment of silent confession this morning? For Lord, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for forgiveness and grace we experience through your death on the cross and the promise and hope of resurrection. As we go through this holy week, would we know your mercy and your love, your passion for us. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Will you stand and pass the peace of Christ to your neighbors this morning? Good morning. I'm Mike Tinker. I'm a deacon for Parish 5A. I'll be reading from John chapter 12, verses 12 through 16. The next day, a great crowd had come to the feast, heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a, a young ass and sat upon it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on an ass's colt. His disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus was glorified, 
Then they remembered that this had been written of him and had been done to him. Blessed be the word of our Lord. It was a better view from down there than looking behind me. Thank you, choir. Thank you, brass. What a blessing to have all this incredible talent in our church and be able to share it. We had our new members class today, and we're talking about spiritual gifts and what are the things that people are given and where can you use those gifts. And there's always something that might be unusual or unexpected that you think, oh, well, I'm good at this thing, but what's God going to do with that anyway, you know? And there's just God's incredible creativity that he will use whatever we have been given for his glory if we'll give it to him. So thank you for sharing your gifts. We're reading about Palm Sunday and Holy Week and talking about all of those pieces. And so I'm going to read this morning from Luke 22. This is what happens on, uh, later in the week and a bit of um, what happens on Monday, Thursday. So here we have at Luke 22. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread called the Passover was approaching. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus. For they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. 
Let us pray. Lord God, help us to hear your voice through your word this day, that we may know your heart and be transformed by your work in our world. Amen. The next section from John chapter 12, following the part that Mike read this morning about Jesus entering in, talks about at first the disciples didn't understand what was going on. And I think there's a lot of that in life for us, don't you think? That it's not until you look backwards that you say, oh, that's what was going on. That's what God was doing. And so John is real honest with us. He says, at first they didn't understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. And many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet Jesus. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look at how the whole world has gone after him. We see their anger, their disappointment, and their frustration. And they're looking for a way to trap Jesus. And that's when Judas comes to the leaders and says, Yeah, I'll turn him over to you. This happens because things are not the way we anticipated or expected or wanted. This cry, Hosanna, we sing, Hosanna in the high. Yes, so we wave our palm branches and we remember this cry that comes from Psalm 118. It was written hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus ever came to earth. But we have this call as one of the songs of ascent as people were coming into Jerusalem for the high holy days for the festivals of Yom Kippur and Passover and the tabernacles and all of these special worship days they would come into Jerusalem and there was thousands and thousands of people who would descend upon the city for these festivals and while they're traveling from wherever they live they would sing these songs together so when we see Psalm 118, it goes like this. It's kind of a call and response. They say, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. And the people respond, his love endures forever. Now you're going to have a few times to do that. Ready? Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love endures forever. In my anguish, I cried to the Lord, and he answered by setting me free. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I will look in triumph on my enemies. And he goes on and on talking about how God is redeeming the people. Now, as they're coming in to Jerusalem for the Passover, they're remembering what? Their time in Egypt, in slavery, and Moses bringing the people up. This angel of death passing over the houses of the Israelites and them escaping from slavery. Now, they had to spend some time in the wilderness, but it was all on that journey to get to the promised land that God had promised to their ancestors. So as they're singing these songs and coming into Jerusalem, they're remembering that God has done this in the past and expecting that God will redeem them again. Hosanna is different than hallelujah. When we sing hallelujah, that's, that's a yay, praise God, we're so excited. But Hosanna is a cry for help. Save us. They sound kind of similar to our ears, but it's a very different feeling that happens it says in verse 19 of Psalm 118, Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. Think of Jesus coming into Jerusalem through the city gates. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. I bet you know the end of that. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God. He has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand, join the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. These are the songs of the people as they're coming in to celebrate Passover. And so when they do this for Jesus, it's done with a whole bunch of energy and excitement and anticipation. There's all kinds of hopefulness. Maybe this year, God's going to redeem us and save us from the hands of the Romans. Maybe this is the time that we'll see these promises fulfilled. And we see all those things that we studied through the Old Testament about what the Messiah was going to be and who he was going to be. In Zechariah 9, we saw this passage. He said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The people are crying, Hosanna, save us, Lord. There are times in our own lives when we cry, help, Hosanna, save me. Just yesterday, I was trying to work with our animals. We have some goats, and one of the nannies had two little babies on Thursday. They're cutest things you ever saw. They're so sweet, and they're doing well, but I noticed yesterday afternoon they're only drinking on one side of mama. So she's all swollen and uncomfortable on the other side. I said, well, we got to help her because she's going to get sick. And so I try and corral her against the side of the barn and squeeze in, and she was not having it. She jumped up and kicked out, and I went flying against the back wall of the barn, and I went, well, that, and Paul was there, like, to help me, and as soon as she starts jumping, he's out. <laughs> I was like, that hurt. <laughs> Go get your dad. <laughs> I don't know how many of you know my husband very well, but he's six foot four and a giant strong, strong man. It's like, yeah, we need dad to help us here. So Jamie comes out and he corners the goat and I could milk her out and she was fine. Hopefully she's doing better today. But there are times when we think, oh, I got this. I can do this myself. And then we end up on our backside against a wall. Saying, oh, help, Lord. There are times when we hear our children saying, help, Mom, I need you right now. 95% of the time, I am in the bathroom. <laughs> I don't know if you remember those days. But it does not fail. It's like, well, you're going to have to hold on for a minute longer till I can get there. And we do that. We hold on until the saving person, the person who can help us, that help arrives for us. The people had been holding on and looking for this Messiah for over 400 years. And they hoped that Jesus would be able to fulfill those prophecies. He rode in on a donkey. That fulfilled the prophecy of Zechariah 9.9. The ends of events of Holy Week take us through this huge variety of emotions. We start on Palm Sunday with rejoicing and optimism. And then where does Jesus go? First thing into Jerusalem, he goes straight to the temple and tore the place apart. That had to be confusing to his disciples as well as to the crowds and the people. It looks like chaos. What is going on? Why would Jesus do this? Well, the people had been taking advantage of these poor individuals just coming to try and worship. Now, when Jesus tears the table of the moneylenders over and says to them, you have made my house of prayer into a den of robbers. 
Why does he do that? Well, because somebody would come from far away and bring their gift. They would bring an animal that was prized possession from their flock, and we're going to give this as a sacrifice to God. And instead of saying, oh, this is wonderful, the people there would trick them and say, oh, well, we can see some blemishes on that lamb. It's not good enough. You, why don't you sell that one to us, and we'll sell you this one over here that's perfect, and it'll be a much better offering for God, because don't you want to give the very best to God? I mean, it's God after all, right? And so they would do this exchange and be out a whole bunch of money. Well, then what happens as soon as they walk away with their new lamb the one from the reject pile goes into the good pile, and they sell it to the next guy. Now, yesterday, or the day before, can't remember now, some of you got a text message from me, supposedly. It was not from me. It was from scammers who got a hold of our phone directory or some way, and so our computer guys are like, we've got to figure this out. I will never, ever, ever ask you to buy a gift card and send it to me secretly. <laughs> but it sounds convincing. They had my whole name on there. They even spelled it right. And you just look at this and you say, the money lenders have not stopped. Praying on well-meaning, good-hearted, generous people who want to do good in the world and instead are getting ripped off. So if you got pulled in, please let me know. We're doing what we can to try and protect us. But there's no way to always protect your people. The wolves are there. That's why Jesus says you have to be innocent as doves and wise as serpents. I got mostly phone calls saying, hey, this sounds a little fishy. Is this you? And I'm like, no, it's not me. I'm so sorry you had to deal with that. And then I have this clergy women's group. I said, on the list of things I don't have time for on Friday before Holy Week, this falls way up there. And yet, God shows up. God is present so Jesus tears apart the temple. Now, we do have sweet little Helen Pratt selling Girl Scout cookies. That is not the same level at all. She's not getting a benefit from it other than it helps her Girl Scout troop. And Girl Scout cookies are amazing, so buy lots of them. But it's not the same thing as what the people were doing for their offerings. So we go from rejoice to chaos and confusion to this bizarre situation on Monday Thursday when Jesus is there with his disciples getting ready for the Last Supper and he puts on a towel around his waist and kneels down and washes the disciples' feet. That was super uncomfortable for them. It was awkward and confusing. I told our middle school kids last week they were going to help be readers for this service on Thursday. And I told them how it's going to go and what we're going to do and Every one of them was like, I'm not washing somebody's feet. And I'm not going to let anybody touch mine. I said, I get it. That's fine. I understand. But I got to tell you, it feels real good. You'll like it if you try it. But it's uncomfortable. Take it from a junior high girl. It's embarrassing. What do we do? If we go and want somebody to touch our feet, we pay them. We sit at the salon and we have them massage our feet and clip our toenails and paint them all pretty, right? We pay somebody to do that. Once every three years, I go and pay a lady to give me a massage. But I'm not just expecting her to do it because it's fun. We pay them to do those things. When someone serves us at our table, we pay them to be the wait staff. It's uncomfortable when we just receive someone sacrificially caring for us. And yet, that's what Christ calls us to do for each other. It's called Maundy Thursday because of mandatum, the Latin word for command. And what's that new command that Jesus gave his disciples at that last supper? Was to love each other and serve one another as he had served them. 
This is who he calls us to be. So I invite you on Thursday at 7 o'clock. It'll be in the Garden Sanctuary. If you live up at Canyon Lakes, we have a special service for you at 1.30 up at the manor. So you don't have to come in at night. We'll come to you. And everyone's invited to that as well. But we have this opportunity to experience that maybe awkward moment of letting somebody touch our stinky toes and share in the body and blood of Jesus. That must have been terribly confusing. Jesus breaking the bread and saying, this is my body, eat it. What? Why? Because you have to be connected to me. And then pouring the blood, the cup and saying, this is my blood, which is poured out for you. Drink it. Whoa, Jesus, this is getting really weird. All of this emotion that the disciples go through, we experience that in our own lives. We experience that as we walk through Holy Week. And then we get to Friday and we see the grief and despair, the pain and loneliness as his closest disciples abandon Jesus completely and he has to face this suffering at the hand of the Roman soldiers and we see those people who followed him watching his brutal crucifixion and John expressed that confusion of the disciples with this comment in chapter 12 at first the disciples didn't understand all of this only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Hindsight is always twenty twenty, right, as they say. And when we look back, we can see more clearly what happened in our life and the path that God was taking us on. But in the middle of it, it feels more like a corn maze, right? That you're confused and you get to a dead end and you got to turn this other way. But if you go up to the helicopter view, you can see this incredible pattern, this design that happened in life. But when you're down on the ground, oh, it's sure hard to see and to figure it out. If we're going to drive our car and only look in the rearview mirror, we're probably going to hit a lot of people. It's nice to look backwards and know what's going, but you never see where you're supposed to be headed. You've got to keep your eyes going forward. On this Holy Week, I encourage us to keep our eyes on Jesus. And even when it's hard to look at the cross, to see his love, his connection, his faithfulness, his grace for us in that moment. God shares the full experience of humanity with us. And this Holy Week, we get to have that range of emotions. And some of it is celebratory and some of it makes us cry. And that's a good thing to understand the depth and the compassion of God's love. God rejoices with us and grieves alongside us. God understands our emotions. That's why we pray for each other, especially in those moments when we struggle to understand the work of God. We might have to hold on a little longer. This week, I would like you to join me as we pray for Doris Matson. She's one of our new people. She helps with homework helpers. She's been really active. She had a recent diagnosis of uterine cancer, and she had her first treatment on Wednesday. Oh, man, she was feeling good, walking around the cancer center. This lady was doing lap. I mean, she's a marathoner. So, yeah, moving her body is what she's about. Well, two days later, she's in the hospital with a partial blockage, and the doctor said, there's really nothing we can do. We just have to let the chemo do its job to shrink the tumor. But we need to pray with her and her family because she's suffering and she's hurting and she's scared. And that's what we do as the body of Christ. When one part suffers, the whole body suffers with it. When one part rejoices, the whole body is rejoicing together with it. And it's okay to feel happy and sad all in the same day. 
right? It's kind of like the heater and air conditioner at your home in the month of March. In the morning, you're like, oh, I got to turn the heat up. It's cold in here. And then by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, whoa, what is going on? Everybody's having hot flashes. It's not just me. Got to turn the air conditioning up, right? It's okay to go through the wide range all in the same day, and sometimes it feels like the same moment. God understands us. He created us. God is still working, and God is still here. That's why they called Jesus Emmanuel, God with us. I encourage you to join us as we journey through our Monday Thursday service and our Good Friday service here in the main sanctuary at 7 o'clock. That journey to the cross and then to the empty tomb next Sunday. You'll see in the entryway we have some artwork. My youngest sister, Cleo, is a very talented artist, and I asked her, I commissioned her to make these set of paintings to express the stories of the events of Holy Week and to walk through those. And so we have a little booklet there on the, the left side. It goes from left to right. I know we walk in this way, but you've got to start over there. Um, to read the scriptures and see the picture. There are times when we read the story and we think, oh, yeah, I know the story of Holy Week. I've read it a thousand times, right? But to see an image and to take a moment to really think about what's happening, what are the emotions involved in that moment with God's people and Jesus' disciples and Jesus himself, how does that look? What does it taste like? What does it feel like to maybe have a deeper understanding of the passion of God for us? So... That's a gift, and you don't have to just do it today. It'll be up all week, so if you can't take some time this morning, I would encourage you to come by the church another time this week and just walk through and pray through those stations. God knows our needs and understands our hearts and is with us. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we thank you for your presence we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for the ways that you are moving and working in the world. As we remember your work through Holy Week, would we feel the depth of your love for us, that love that goes all the way to the cross, and then the redemptive work of that empty tomb, that we can rejoice once more. God, in those moments of confusion and chaos, help us to feel your presence and know your mercy, and experience your peace that passes even understanding. And Lord, sometimes we get it wrong, but we pray for your forgiveness and mercy to prevail on the other side. Lord, would you be with those who are hurting and recovering? Would you bless those who are in the hospital this day? Be with Marlene. Be with Doris and her family. God, we thank you for those who are out of the hospital. Would you bless and protect Carol and be with Debbie? We pray for Yvonne. Lord, we know that you are present in their bodies and in their situations, and would they just have knowledge and wisdom. We pray for those who are grieving. God, this holy week, as we remember your death, we remember those who have gone far too soon the pain and heartache that it is to watch a son or a grandson or someone who is precious to us suffer and die and not have answers to why. Would you comfort and protect those families? And God, we pray for our world. You told Nicodemus that you so loved the world that you were sent. We pray for places of conflict and chaos. Would you Bless and protect the people of Ukraine. Would you bless and protect the people in Israel and Palestine? Would there be peace that prevails in chaotic places? Lord, thank you for the work you're doing in us and through us. And we pray that prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As many of you know, my area of responsibility within the church is finance. And I want to thank you personally for your continued commitment to giving. Our church is sharing the love of God here at Canada First Presbyterian, around the Tri-Cities, and around the world. You may always place your tithes or offerings in the wooden boxes at the back. You can mail them into the church office or you can go online at kfpc.org and give that way. Quick story. Recently, my wife Janice and I had a lawyer review our wills, community property agreements, medical care directives, that stuff, and no, there's no issue. <laughs> neither, neither one of us are having any concerns. Simply long-term planning. But we are adding in one small thing. We have been members here at Kennewick First for 25 years. Incredibly good years for us. And we want to allocate something from our final assets back to the church. The lawyer gave us a simple way to do that. We can add a codicil onto our existing will, which we are doing. And I would encourage you to think about other alternative ways you can help support this church. Thank you. Would you join me in prayer? We give you thanks, O Lord, with all our heart. You have provided everything we need in your steadfast love. Receive our offerings as our response to your great faithfulness. For the praise of Jesus' name, amen.
as we go through the events of this Holy Week, I encourage you to keep your eyes on Jesus. In the Walk with Christ, we have this beautiful song that we sing at a very special moment, and I want us to remember that even when the world seems chaotic and confusing, that God is there. So if you know it, sing along. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Go in grace, go in peace, knowing that God goes with you. May you know the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the powerful saving grace of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.